Hey guys, welcome back to MechaFax. In today's episode is the RX-93 New Gundam, a prototype, new type use, general purpose mobile suit from the Universal Century timeline of the Gundam Metaverse. The New Gundam made its first and only major animated appearance in the movie Mobile Suit Gundam Shards Counter-Attack. However, there were rumors that it did appear in the OVA and TV show of Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. However, I re-watched the OVA and TV show and then checked out a few other sources and it appears it was not animated at all, so I'm going to assume in this video that it was never released or seen in Unicorn. However, it did appear in major Gundam promotions throughout their anniversaries, particularly the 10th and 3rd anniversary promos. In paperback, the new Gundam appeared in the novels and manga of Momosu Gundam, Shars Counterattack, along with Baltachika's Children, High Streamer, UC-0099 Moon Crisis, and many more. In video games, the new Gundam appeared in almost every game released since its debut, such as Dynasty Warriors Gundam Franchise, Gundam Battle Assault, Gundam Extreme Versus, and many more. The original mech designer of the mobile suit was Yukata Izubuchi. For figures, the new Gundam has been released on their Bandai's figure lines, such as Mobile Suit in Action, DX Mobile Suit in Action, GFF or Gundam Fixed Figuration, and Robot Damashi. For model kits, the new Gundam has been released in many super deformed BB Senshi kits. Then for 1144 scale kits, it was released in the original 80s non-grade and a few high grades more recently. Then for the 1100 scale, there was the 80s non-grade along with the master grades in 2000 and 2012. And then recently, the real grade in 2019. Next is the new Gundam's technical specifications and general data. Its head height is at 22 meters. Over our height at 23 meters, base weight at 27.9 tons, full weight at 63 tons, powered by a Minoski ultra compact fusion reactor, armored by Gundarium alloy, crewed by one pilot in a panoramic monitor linear seat sacro frame cockpit located in the torso, developed from the RX 9 Narrative Gundam, the ARX 014P Silver Bullet funnel test type and the YRA-90A Mu Gundam. First deployed in early UC-0093 in a skirmish following the Battle for Fifth Luna at the early stages of the Second New Zealand War. Last deployed on March 12th of UC-0093 during the Battle of Axis. Manufactured by Anaheim Electronics. Operated by Lando Bell. And the only known pilot of the new Gundam is the White Devil himself, Amuro Ray. Next is the new Gundam's armaments and equipment. First are the 60mm Vulcans. The new Gundam mounts a pair of 60mm shell firing Vulcan guns on its head. The Vulcans are mainly used for intercepting and destroying incoming missiles, mobile suit sensors, and other lightly armored targets. Next are the beam sabers. The new Gundam mounts one custom beam saber stored on the right side of the backpack and a spare beam saber stored on the left forearm. These beam savers are the new gun's primary close range weapons, which emits a beam of plasma contained by an eye field to cut through most armor. The custom beam saber has a higher output than compared to the spare beam saber, and has the capabilities to change its shape and be more efficient when in combat, such as when the blades in the custom beam savers can be formed at the instant it impacts an object or a mobile suit. Third is the beam rifle. The new gun mounts a handheld, ranged high-powered beam rifle with an output of 3.8 megawatts. At max output, the beam fired is comparable in power to that of a battleship's main cannon, and it can also function as a beam machine gun by changing the burst selector. An independent aiming device was initially meant to be mounted above the rifle's barrel, but it was changed to a single shot grenade launcher to provide more defensive purposes. Fourth is the Hyper Bazooka. The new Gundam mounts a 5 round magazine fed hyper bazooka that has improved firing range and destructive power compared to the bazookas used by the Earth Federation. The bazooka can be stored on the backpack and can still be fired from storage, often catching opponents by surprise. It is capable of destroying an enemy unit in a single shot and is mostly used to take down slow, heavily armored targets. Next is the shield. The new Gundam mounts a custom shield mounted on the left arm, which is emblazoned with Amro's emblem. Primarily used to protect the Mosu from beam weapons, projectiles, and missiles, it features a built-in beam cannon and four missiles. In Shard's counterattack, the shield has been used in one strategic way, such as fooling enemies that armor was shot down by purposely leaving the shield and hyper bazooka behind 
lowering the enemy's guard, then taking them out. Next are the Fin Funnels. The new gun mounts 6 unique remote weapons called the Fin Funnel. When attacking, it bends into a U-shape and a magnetic field is formed between the two generator arms to generate and accelerate mega particles. Despite their name, the Fin Funnels are technically bits since they have built-in power generators rather than E-caps used by traditional funnels. While this made them more expensive to produce, it gives the Fin Funnels a longer operational time and allows them to fire more powerful beams. Each fin funnel has an output of 3 megawatts and can fire 7 shots in a single charge. The fin funnel can also generate a unique beam shield known as the fin funnel barrier to protect against beam weaponry and solid projectiles. However, if an enemy funnel enters the barrier, it may cause physical or mental damage to the pilot due to psychowave wave interference. Although larger than normal funnels, the fin funnels have higher mobility thanks to a triple block design and thrusters. Next is the Ghiridoga's Beam Machine Gun. While this was not part of the new Gundam's standard weapons or equipment, it was used during the final battle between Shar and Amuro during the Second New Zeon War. Since Amuro had all of his beam weapons uh, destroyed between him and Shar, so he just grabbed the nearby beam rifle and used it until it was destroyed. Second to last is the Hand Launchers. The new Gundam is equipped with hand launchers that can fire birdlime and dummy balloons. Bird lime is an adhesive substance that's used to repair small cracks in exposed hulls or colonies or restrain targets. Then for the dummy balloons, they are mobile suit sized decoys for the new Gundam to act as decoys in front of other mobile suits and ships. Last is the Saikamu system. The new Gundam integrates Saikamu receptors throughout its cockpit that allows for Amuro to control the mobile suit as if it is his own body, as well as to have better control over the fin funnels. How this system works, in short, is that the Saikamu system translates Amuro's thoughts and brainwaves into raw machine code to the mobile suit and weapons, allowing for better performance and weapons handling. However, this system is unpredictable. One example is that the new Gundam uh, reacted to Amuro's thoughts, which caused a strange phenomenon that allowed the new Gundam to single-handedly push the remnants of Axis away from Earth. While this was a great benefit, it was unpredictable to the point that it wasn't safe for the Federation to apply to their future mobile suits. Well, unless you were the Vis Foundation and put it into the RxO Unicorn, the Banshee, and the Phoenix. But that's another video for another time. But it's a cool system, but unpredictable. Last is the New Gundam's history and lore. Development of the New Gundam would begin in the early UC-90s upon news of Shar Osnabel's return and his creation of a second neo Zeon movement. Thus, the Federation would create and send Londo Bell, a special forces unit consisting of ex auk and ex Karba members to properly investigate and engage anti-Federation activities. This would include One Year War ace Amuro Ray, who needed a versatile and durable mobile suit to complement his new type abilities. Amuro, from his experience as a mobile suit pilot, would design the base mobile suit, then had Anaheim Electronics manufacture it. This would incorporate universal components to ease parts procurement and the latest mobile suit technologies of the time, such as Sacroframe technology and Saikamu receptors. <clears throat> Looking at Jushar. <clears throat> the new Gundam alongside Neo Zeon Sasabi would become the most advanced mobile suits during the second Neo Zeon War and that era. The new Gundam's initial rollout and testing was cut short, as it will be rushed into service after the battle for 5th Luna. Amuro was severely outmatched in the prototype Rigazi against Shar Sazabi, so following the battle, Amuro would head over to Anaheim Electronics' Luna factories to help complete the mobile suit and fine-tune it to his needs. The new Gundam would make his combat debut in a skirmish between Londa Bell and Neo Zeon. Despite having no fin funnels or additional adjustments, the new Gundam would ride from a base jabber from the moon to the combat zone, arriving just in time to save a damaged civilian shuttle that had drifted into the battle. Following the skirmish, the new Gundam would be completely outfitted and fine-tuned aboard the Londo Bell flagship, Rock Kailum, for the final battles to come. The new Gundam would enter the final battle of the Second Neo Zeon War at Axis, and prevent its asteroid drop onto Earth. The new Gundam would easily handle the intercepting Neo Zeon forces, along with keeping Quest Pariah's Alpha Zero mobile armor at bay, and finally shooting down Green Agus's Yagdoga. Once Shar and his Azabi sorteed and engaged the new Gundam, 
it would become the most epic battle between these two rivals and it would be reminiscent of their final battle during the One Year War. Ultimately, Amuro and his damaged new Gundam would come up victorious in this fight and captured Shar's escape pod from leaving the combat zone. However, that victory would be short-lived as Axis would make planet fall. Amuro did not want to stand by and do nothing, so he took his new Gundam, went under the asteroid, and started pushing. Several other Jagans, Jim 3s, and Giridogas from the Federation, Lawnabel, and Neo Zeon joined in as they desperately tried to save Earth. This would cause the Psychomu system in the new Gundam to overload as the mass concentration of willpower and high emotions running from the pilots desperately trying to save Earth began to resonate a massive green light that would throw all the Mobuses away from Axis and then the new Gundam would single-handedly push Axis away from Earth to find all physics and other things science related. This event will be known as the Axis Shock and will be revisited or mentioned in UC-96 during the events of Unicorn and Twilight Axis and then again in UC-97 during the events of Narrative. In the end, the new Gundam along with Amuro Ray and Shar Osnabel would not be found again and will be listed as missing in action. And that concludes this episode of Mecha Facts on the RX-93 New Gundam. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode today guys and if you liked it, please click that thumbs up button. If you disliked it, double click that thumbs down button. And you want to start a conversation about the New Gundam, the suits from Shar's Counterattack or from the Universal Century, please hit up that comment section down below and start a conversation. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell if you haven't already to stay up to date on new episodes of Mecha Facts and other content on my channel. But thanks again guys for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time.